Well, it's been two years. Wow. Two years we've been on full-time RVers. And we started out by selling the house and setting up here on the property. Yeah. Shortly after that is when we went on the road. But technically, it's been two years. It's been two years, yes. That's right. We have been wow. on the road now living full-time in an RV for two years. And it may not be for you. Is it for you? It's for me. <laughs> okay. It is for me. Okay. And we're not trying to be negative, but we want you guys to think about these things. And we're kind of reflect on some of the things maybe we should have done if we had to go back and check, you know, try it all over again. I agree. I agree. And we'll also tell you some of the things to keep in mind if you're considering this lifestyle. This full-time RV right? lifestyle, because if you're a part-timer, it's a little bit different. So, and it has been, I think it's been phenomenal. But once again, this may not be for you. Is it for you? It's it's for me, but I have a couple things there that I probably would have done differently. Well, let's talk about those things. Okay. And I guess the most important thing, the, the most important thing before you decide what RV you want to get is your budget. Oh, the budget. Yes. And this lifestyle is expensive. It is. <laughs> Especially now, when you have, you know. It's, it's, there's a lot going on here. There's a lot to maintain <laughs> and take care of. No. Uh, just kidding. But there is. That's the, and with today's climate, the economic climate, things are that much more difficult. I, go, I mean, that, that just kind of goes without saying. And uh, we have discussed this in other videos before, and unless you really want to do your homework, delve deep into boondocking and memberships that can save you a lot of money, but you're forgoing, you're giving up certain amenities and comforts that you may have in your home, yeah. that you, you, know, you enjoy in your home, it's expensive. It is expensive, and I, I think that I, I think that for us, we did a budget, and we're not even going to talk about our budget because our budget's a hot mess. Be, to be in, in all fairness, it is. But we we set a budget, and we were we were not that far off. We were off, but we weren't that far off. But now, because of things that are going on, like Chris said, that we can't stick to it. There's no way. And the thing is, there's no more income coming in, so. We have to forego some things to make the budget work now. Now, I know some of you may think, well, there's no, you, you guys have a YouTube channel. You're probably, the money's coming in. No, don't, <laughs> we wish. it doesn't work that way. <laughs> we wish. We, I do have a retirement pension yeah. and or that's a, a set amount. And we try to stay in, into that and that doesn't work out. Ever. We're not good when it comes to doing a budget. There are others that are better than us. We're, we're admitting that, but we, we know enough to know to tell you it's expensive. Well, and one of the major things in the budget is the cost of groceries. I don't care where you are, groceries have gone up. We have foregone going out to eat quite often now recently because we're like, it's just too expensive, even for lunch, it's too much. If that's one of the areas we've cut back on in terms mm -hmm. of RVing because in your mind you're thinking, I'm gonna go out and travel and I'm gonna go out and to these restaurants and Local everything. Local cuisine. And it's great and it is fantastic. Yeah. But with the th way things are going right now, we've had to drastically cut that back. Big time. Big time. And that's just for us. That may not be for you. You may yeah. be able to handle that. And that's just the reality of it. So if you're going to go full time, get it out of your mind that you're going to go out every night and enjoy the local cuisine, yeah. right? Yeah, and as as great as that is and fun that is, you just gotta you gotta let that get go and just there, commit yourself to cooking out, cooking in in the in the RV, right? And there are th some things that you can you can change and you can adjust, and one of those is food. So that's an easy one. And um, I know some of you will say, "Well, food prices are the same whether you're in a house or an RV." But if you're traveling on the road and you go up, to, say, to Bar Harbor, and you spend a week in Bar Harbor. The amount of food that you're paying up there, whether it's to go out or locate, it's much more expensive yeah. than if you were in a smaller remote area where the cost of those foods may not be as high because they do vary depending on your location and your travels, especially eating out. 
Yes. And it, whether it's eating out at a fast food joint or a nice restaurant, those prices will, you know, try going to a nice restaurant on, on the, uh, in the, at the beach area, as opposed to in the middle of nowhere and see what you come up with. That's true. Um, the other thing is gas. I mean, if we want to travel where we want to travel, we have to take in consider consideration fuel or gas, depending on what we were driving that time. So that has put a little bit of a damper on us also. We have chosen not to travel some places that we were going to travel to because the price of fuel right now. And it just is what it is. But for us to try to even get close to budget, we have to give up some things. So and that's just, just reality. So really quick, to summarize, we're not going to delve deep into the break it all down for you that's not why we're doing this video the budget is the most important thing obviously and whether it's the budget for your food your stay or your RV keep those things in mind it's not cheap and we've been very fortunate we haven't had any major issues with either one of our rigs so far um, at all like not even close but we have to always keep that in mind. It could happen. So we have to make sure that we have some kind of funds put aside yeah. to take care of that. You gotta have an emergency fund. Mm -hmm. So make sure you set aside a, a, an extra amount of money for emergency funds and in case something comes up. Right. So like, like Katrina's birthday. <laughs> another thing would be just the travel itself. Finding the better spots, the nicer locations, the fun locations, it's not that easy. It, you gotta know the little tricks of the trades. You gotta know to book out ahead of time. You gotta know Hold to- on. And by ahead of time, you mean up to a year in advance? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you gotta know okay. these things. You gotta understand that to want to, if you're up in Ohio and you're going down to Florida, you can't it's it, it's not impossible don't get me wrong but if you're you're looking for a place you gotta book out a year ahead of time now i've noticed over this last year not the first year so much but the second year i've noticed that there are more spaces available but it seems to me at the nicer resorts the more expensive when you're trying to get into well, the state parks and the, the lesser expensive places they book out extremely fast so that's another thing to keep in mind. If we know our route, we almost have to book, if we can, at those places. Because if not, we're going to have to book at a resort. We just had the example. We were in Niagara, and we had to do that last minute. So we had to stay somewhere very expensive. And that eats into our budget. Now, so keep that in mind. If you're going to travel, you're going to go full time, and you're traveling, you need to plan out a, a year ahead of time. Are there things that you can do, especially if you're boon boondocking, you could do it at the last minute? Are there campgrounds you can find at the last minute? Absolutely. Yes. But you got your work cut out for you, and you got to be you got you got to understand that many of that will be uh, maybe it's a campground that's just a no frills campground. You're just there for a couple nights, and if you're okay with that kind of stuff, that's fine. That'll work out. But planning your travels can be stressful. It can be tiresome, and it can be a lot of work and you include memberships in that those things will help you out whether it's a thousand trails whether it's a passport america and i do believe koa also has a membership program you can become part of they have the rewards so there's us. there are all those things that you can do but it, it 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 does it's not as simple as just going online and or picking up the phone and going i want to stay there Give me a spot. It doesn't work well, out that like that. I, I've also noticed too with those all those programs and all those plans, you're not saving tons of money. You're saving money, but not tons of money. So I take that in consideration too. Yeah, we have Passport America. Yes, we have the KOA rewards. Um, Thousand Trails honestly has been the best bet for us as far as saving money, but you have to give up things too. There's a few that we've stayed at. They're absolutely phenomenal. They're wonderful. And we would stay there again and again. And then there's some, that, some of them that we would not want to go back to. There are some that we would go to just because they're okay and we don't have to pay anything additional to stay there. So it just kind of depends. And, and real quick, touch it on Thousand Trails. Mm -hmm. Our overall experience of Thousand Trails has been pretty positive. We, cha we changed our mind. At first we thought, this is not for us. We're not gonna be able to do this. And the reason why is because the first two we stayed at were, were not very good. But uh, 
you know, you hear those horror stories, but I think overall we've been happy with it and it's been worthwhile for us to keep it. We no crazy bad experiences. So once again, be, be willing and uh, to commit yourself to planning ahead, you know, a year ahead of time, if not even longer to make those travel plans. Now you can find a place to stay. If you want to go someplace and stay for three, four months, you can do that as well. But that kind of, for me, that kind of defeats the purpose. It takes away from of the, being on the road RV. Yeah, our adventure, our adventures. You know, we've done that. We've stayed at places for a month or so here or there, and about after the first the first week or two, we're we're itching. We're like we're ready to go. Yeah. We don't want to, you know, we're not because we're not staying somewhere like a beach resort for two months. Okay, so right you know we're, we're ready to go so i would also say keep in mind another thing that may not be for you is the tight quarters when you go someplace you can be on top of one another uh, you, do you can mean, have your do you neighbor mean like your neighbor or you and i your neighbor could be much closer to you well that yes your yes your your neighbor can be much closer to you than what you think than what you're used to at your sticks and bricks be prepared for that. Be prepared to see things or hear things or experience things that you may not experience when you're at home or it, it's, it may not be as bad. Well, the other thing is that is a big issue now with a lot with us and a lot of our friends are the lights. There are some RVers that like to keep all their string lights and their rig lights on all night long. Really, in our opinion, you should turn those off when it becomes quiet hours, but they leave them on and that makes it more difficult to sleep in. Or, or it could be something as simple so. as, you know, the dog barking or the dog running around or Chris snoring. Um, so those are things you need to be aware of and be mindful of they may not be for you no it doesn't we've have we've yet to have any crazy major experiences it's been we've had minor lights. we've had lights that's it, about it yeah but it's been yeah. minor that uh, you know as far as neighbors go we mm -hmm. uh, maybe we've just been lucky because you hear these horror stories i don't know but so far it's been working out it's it's, it's true fun. we don't we don't have any really crazy oh my gosh the blah 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 happened we don't have any of those. and i'm not one to get bent out of shape by having a neighbor park you know 20 feet away from me or 10 feet away from me at a campground mm -hmm. because i enjoy the campground rv park experience mm -hmm. i personally like it as opposed to others who prefer boondocking so if you're one that is up for boondocking, you're interested in boondocking, you can get out west and go to some remote places and be by yourself. And that, that sounds places. spectacular. That sounds awesome as well. So it's something else you may want to take keep in mind when it comes to full-time RV living, it may not be for you. Another one for me, myself, is the RV. Did we, did we choose the right RV to begin with? Yeah. Because you know, we had traveled part time before we started this full time adventure, and we were almost pretty much for sure this is what we wanted. Now we're thinking, was that definitely what we wanted? I don't know. Well, I definitely wanted a Class A RV. It, it was maybe it, was, it comes yeah. down to the model and the style and the layout, True. and that's something that seems to happen a lot. And this and the size. And our first one was a gasser, and then we went to the diesel pusher because Chris wanted diesel pusher and then I wanted like a bath and a half so we kind of compromised and we you know we bought at when it was like the peak and everybody else was you know looking for RVs and you couldn't find exactly what you wanted so you're like okay we'll figure out which one we'll, we would compromise on and that's what we did we actually really like this RV we've had no major issues but I think looking back Chris you would go a little bit shorter right well i wanted long. something shorter to begin with but I, it this is something that a lot of RVers will go through and they will start out in one style and within another year go to another style and a year later go to another style it's not uncommon it's understandable in a way um maybe from an outsider's point of view they're like what are you doing why are you doing this but right. once you get on the road and you start traveling and you start going through you you kind of see yourself being in another rig can i do that can i do this and 
it, it's I think it's a natural kind of thing to go through. Well, our travel has changed too. So for next year, I think most of you know that we're going to Alaska. So our travel plans have changed too. So we do need a smaller rig. This isn't going to work. When we were using this rig, or we are still using this rig, we're going to more uh, campgrounds, resorts, not a lot of resorts, but here and there. So things that the class A's work better at. But if we're going and doing more of that traveling for the next year or so, we definitely need a different rig. Yeah. Once again, it, it, so. it, we're not we're not trying to be negative no. but these are all things you should keep in mind you should think about is this it may not be for you because if you get in that rv and four or five months down the road you're like i'm not really comfortable in this rv do you have the means to switch right and is it a good thing to switch maybe it's it's not because of monetary reasons so m try to get yourself you get the thought process in that if i if you're getting this rv you want to stay in that rv for an extended period of time i think that's pro probably the better way to go but once again we have well, friends that have have changed up quite we frequently we have and honestly there's nothing, included. there's nothing wrong with changing rvs i mean there is absolutely nothing wrong with that but i think for ourselves and maybe some people that we know buying used if you're going to switch seems like it'd be better for us because you guys know they are going to decrease in value they're not going to keep it for the most part for the most most of them aren't anyway yeah i think if i had so. to do it all over again i would definitely try to talk her into going with something around a 34 35 foot long uh class a okay so that's something you know that's it, it, it's hindsight that's just the way it goes hmm. But it's another thing that you want to keep in mind because it may not be for you once you get out there. And a another big issue and mm -hmm. why it may not be for you, and you should keep in mind, uh -oh. is your family. Ask yourself, can you commit to staying away from your family for an extended period of time? So if you're living on the East Coast and you're going to be spending a great deal of time on the West Coast, can you be away from your family for two, three, four, or more months? When we started this, uh, our daughter, the oldest one that's married, did not have any, she didn't have any children yet. They didn't have grand, we didn't have grandchildren. Now we have grandchildren. So it's a game changer. It's a game changer it for is. us. And it makes a difference where and when we want to go and how we're going to get back because we're not interested in spending six months, eight months away from the grandbaby. Yeah. So if we have to fly back, we'll just save somewhere and do that. But I, it's important to us. I did not expect it to be as tough as it is when the grandkids no. come along. Now that they're here, it's tough. Be mindful of that. Keep that in mind. Some of you are already out there full-time RV living with grandchildren to begin with. Or your own children, your younger family. So you're like, oh, it's, it's okay. It's an, uh, that's something we experienced once we got on the road, true. right? It, it absolutely true. And it has definitely been a game changer. That's the hardest thing for me is being away from the, the grandkids. So it may not be for you if you're going to be away from your family for an extended period of time. Mm -hmm. We've done, worked out a few things where they've flown out and met us and spent some time with us. Next year, we're gonna be going on the road for, could be eight months away from the East Coast. Well, it might even be a year. So how so. are we gonna deal with that? We gotta, we, there's something we need to consider. Are we gonna fly back for a couple weeks or will they come out and meet us? We also have, well, more you than me, but you also have doctor's appointments. You're gonna to have to fly back for doctor's appointments and you have before. Yeah, and once again, it, this this may not be for you, but if I had to tell anyone, it, it is fantastic. It is definitely for me. The pros definitely outweigh the cons, and it has been a, a life-changing experience for me, well, especially meeting friends on the road. That's been the best thing about it by far. And it's not perfect by any means, just like living it in your home, you know, your sticks and bricks. It's it's not perfect by any means, but what the joy you're going to get out of it and the memories that you're going to make, they're they're un They are definitely priceless. They're, yeah, they're priceless. They're you're not going to be able to get that. You're not going to be able to order up something from Amazon and have the same experience in our opinion as it is to go travel to new places and meet new people. Those are memories you're going to have forever. 
Yeah, but ordering something from Amazon and having it delivered to a campground is always a great experience. I oh, don't come care. on! It's, it's awesome to have a package as, delivered as Chris to would like the to, campground. Like to order know. stuff on the road, and then and that's another thing. Keep in mind, you're ordering stuff on the road. A lot of the resorts and campgrounds now are going to charge you a fee, and then if you're only staying there for three days, four days, or a week, you got to make sure you're going to get that. And if you're going to get that that product there in that time, you might have to pay for extra shipping. So it all kind of, you need to just weigh out the pros and the cons. We, 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 we've mm. talked about these things before in our, uh, on our videos. If you guys have ever, if you guys have watched the channel, we mentioned these things, but this is a two year wrap up. It's been two years. It's hard to believe that two years have gone by that quick and fast. And that's another thing. It does go by quick and fast because when you're a full-time RVer, you're planning a year or more out. So it has a tendency instead of you know doing it day to day and just mm -hmm. hanging out and like at your sticks and bricks, and you know that you're going to take a vacation in the summer and you plan those two weeks out and that's it because you know you're going to work and back to work. When you're full time RV living on the road, you're constantly thinking six, eight, ten, twelve months or more ahead of time because you have to. And if that's not for you, if you don't want to do that, you may not want to do this lifestyle. But if you don't mind working that into your schedule, especially for those of you who are on the road who work on the road, you know, and trying to fit all that in as well, because when you're working on the road, it's even more difficult because you may have to go to a spot where you have connectivity 24 seven. Right. So internet and yes. phone can play a big part into that. And, and I would t say that in our two years of traveling, the pros definitely outweigh the cons, but it may not be for you if you are willing to deal with the things that we've mentioned in this video. One more thing I wanted to I wanted to mention is that, and I wasn't thinking this when we started off, but that first year, you're you're paying for a lot of stuff up front. So yes, you have a budget, but keep in mind you may want to save up just a little bit more for the output for all those bookings. You're not gonna be able to pay for those once you get there. So I guess my point is, you might want a little bit more in the bank that first year before you start on the road. Well, that would be your your emergency fund, right? No, that's just my everyday budget for the year. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, it's, it's once again, guys, it's been fantastic. It's been fun. Our two year review uh, and I wouldn't trade anything, the good, bad, the indifferent. The it's ugly. Been, it, it has been a, a, a blessing. And these are all things you need to take in consideration. It's not glamorous. It is by, it's not all glamorous. Yeah. But it's not all doom and gloom. There is a lot of beautiful things to there's, see. There's, to take, there, take yeah, there's so much more positiveness yeah. out there than they're negative. So, and that's what we're trying to Inst instill in everyone and talk to you and just, you know, come on guys. Like there's just too much negativity out there. Let's, let's stop that. And hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. It does help out the channel. And if you guys. can like and share this video, that will help out as well. And we really appreciate it. If this is your first time to the channel, please consider subscribing to the channel. You just hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. You'll be notified every time we release a video. Yeah. And it has been an honor and a pleasure hanging out with you guys. It's been a blessing. And hopefully this will help you guys out in, in your decision to become full-time RVers. Sounds wonderful. Come on, join us. It is wonderful. Join us. Yes, it is. All right, guys, there you have it. Remember, any day you can get away it's is a great, great day, day, guys. You guys take care. Take and we care. We hope to see you on the road. Take Bye. care, guys. See ya.